Um, turn it around to the um, reverse side, where you see the two great seals of the United States of America. Yep. Okay? Now, if you notice, it says those are supposed to be the two great seals of the United States of America, correct? Yep. Those aren't. Those are the two seals of the Order of the Illuminati. Now, I have all this memorized from my days in the Illuminati. Now, this went on the dollar bill in 1935, but this reflects ancient beliefs of secret societies that go back literally before the birth of Christ. It symbolizes the ancient goal of secret societies of the establishment of what in scripture we see in Revelation 13 is the reign of the beast and the false prophet. You're the great seal, a very fascinating story. <laughs> well, I got one right here. So. The great seal of the United States, or is it the great seal of the Illuminati? There's a lot more than meets the eye. JC Radio, David and Donna Carrico, the dynamic duo of followers of Jesus Christ. Nah, we're just regular people. We're just loving and serving the Lord, and we challenge you to love and serve the Lord and learn all that you can about Him. We're preaching the gospel of the kingdom and teaching the doctrine of Christ to the whole world. And thanks again for listening to our programs and blessings to all of you. It's time to shake and wake up the world with the best biblical talk shows from all over the world gathered in one place. Shakeandwakeradio.com where the truth is all that matters and the truth will set you free. Shakeandwakeradio.com Esther Jade's Limited. Homemade, clean, natural. Baby Soft Healing Cream. All organic healing balm for all over skin care for baby and mother's tender nipples if breastfeeding. No harsh chemicals or essential oils, just organic chamomile and calendula infused into coconut and sweet almond oils and blended with super moisturizing shea butter and non nano zinc oxide to heal chapped or dry skin rashes, eczema, cradle cap and psoriasis. Cloth diaper safe and safe for sensitive and thin skin. 4 ounce clear plastic jar for $18 plus shipping. Pain Buster Cream. Improved even more. 10% menthol, hojari green frankincense resin and DMSO for deep penetration. 8 organic herbs infused in organic castor oil, no avocado oil, KN, cloves, juniper berry, arnica, oregano, skullcap, lemongrass and lavender. With extracts of cayenne, hops, ginger, oregano, skullcap, St. John's wort and rosemary. Aloe vera and vitamin E much less beeswax so absorbs even better. 500 mg CBD with just enough THC extract to increase the CBD potency. Pain-killing organic essential oils wintergreen, lavender, frankincense, and rosemary. 3.5 ounces clear plastic jars for $42 plus shipping. Find us on Facebook today. Esther Jade's Limited. Homemade, clean, natural.
And welcome everybody to Spiritual Warfare Friday. We are live. Today is April 5th of 2024. I had to look at it because I almost forgot what year it was. But uh, welcome to the show, everybody. This is Dan Bedondi and Trey Harris here. we got an awesome show for you tonight. Uh, continuing from last week, we had Cody Cox on. We're going to talk more about this eclipse because we there was a lot of things we brought up last week that we didn't get to talk about. Um, my big concerns today is the title. Should we be concerned, emphasize and CERN, about the eclipse, and as, because the CERN is actually going to do a test run during the eclipse, then you got the appearance of this horned comet, and so many other things tied into this. So the APEC rockets launching off, which happens to be an Egyptian deity of you know, a darkness against the sun, whatever. It's crazy stuff. You can't make the stuff up. You can't. And we understand there's a lot of wild conspiracies going on. Some people claim it's the rapture. Some people claim it's uh, the beginning of the three days of darkness, which is not a biblical prophecy. It is neither of the sort. So we covered that last week, and if we have time, we'll get into that again. Uh, but uh, we're going to focus mainly on um, the CERN and also... Uh, what the transmission here? All right, I thought it was buffering. But we're gonna we'll focus mo mostly on CERN and about this uh, dark matter. I mean, a lot of stuff is going on. It's crazy, man. And uh, so, what's going on, Trey? I think you're muted. I am okay. sorry. I had to turn everything down because I didn't silence YouTube, and I was like, "Whoops." <laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? Glad to be here tonight. Glad to see you all here. Uh, this is going to be a very fun conversation, I think. This is uh, not really my wheelhouse, but I like a good challenge, so I'm looking forward. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to this. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, and somebody said in the comment, too, uh, Wilfred, yeah, there is a lot of fair porn going on, guys, and please avoid it, guys. And uh, the thing is, if you're uh, you got a solid base, foundation in jesus christ you shouldn't have to worry about these things anyway and there was an earthquake today right in new jersey which i felt to hear in rhode island today it woke me up actually and uh big earthquakes going on all over the world and could this be a precursor and which i do believe yeah this uh eclipse coming up could be a sign of judgment and very well could be but again if you're born again you should not be afraid of this stuff you should welcome it you know what I mean? It's crazy, man. So, um, yeah, again, today, uh, sh should we be concerned about the eclipse? And uh, today's show is brought to you by ShakeAndWakeRadio.com and BeforeIt'sNews.com. Please check them out. And also uh, EstherJades.com. Uh, discover the power of holistic wellness for your mind, body, and spirit. Transform your life with natural solutions. And that's their Facebook page. If you want to take a screenshot of that, pause it real quick and take a screenshot. And if not, there's an email address right above my head there where you can email Kathleen uh, to get your products, whatever the case. They're still having problems with the website. Uh, the GoDaddy, I guess, I give them a hard time because uh, they're a business. So, uh, yeah. So before we begin, like always, we like to start. You want to start off with a prayer, Trey? Absolutely. Awesome. Father, thank you for letting us gather here tonight and, you know, do the best we can to live up to Ephesians 5.11. Father, we don't want to have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather we want to expose and reprove and definitely don't want to scare anybody, but, you know, make sure that as there is a lot of fear-mongering going on in the world, Father, that we are pointing people back to you. As the darkness comes, even if it's just for a few minutes this uh, in the next few days, uh, that our prayer is that the light of Christ will shine even brighter uh, for the world to see. And so we just ask that you send your Holy Spirit down to guide us as we go through this information, Father, that the things that you want us to say will be said, and we just pray that this is edifying for your church and your body, Father, and we just ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Awesome. So we like to start off with prayer because uh, very important, especially when you're exposing stuff in the spiritual war, that's why, hence, Spiritual Warfare Friday, and we like to expose these evil deeds because uh, 
I mean, the whole world's full of it. It's crazy, man. And yeah, we're not going to promote any fear porn today, guys. And if you're looking for fear porn to get a little scared, you got the wrong place. We're going to tell you, the, you know, of course, the whole cold hard truth about things. But again, um, we're, we're not, you know, actually, I should say the father, our heavenly father, he's not the author of fear. You know what I mean? He is not the author of confusion, nothing like that. Because there's certainly yeah. many things going out there that are causing a lot of concerns, a lot of confusion, a lot of fear. And now we're here, hopefully, to clear up all that today. And again, if you want to know more about the rapture and the three days of darkness, which have been both proven false, this rapture, well, I'm sorry, this uh, rapture, here we go. Yeah, this uh, eclipse coming up here, you know, Monday. So there's going to be no rapture yeah. Monday. There's going to be no three days of darkness. And I can assure you sure. say that because this is what the scriptures say. It's not what I say. It's what the Bible says anyway. Which that yeah, thing? well, oh. and I uh, I just want to let everybody know right off the bat, I'm just going to plug myself shamelessly here because uh, I feel like it would be edifying for anybody who hasn't heard it. But I believe it was two weeks ago on Course Correction Radio. We, we, did a, we did a presentation on, with this eclipse, what you should focus on. And it was really just about the fact that it was coming up right before Passover. And what really, in my opinion, Christians should be focusing on, you know, obviously we're going to be exposing uh, and bringing to light things that, uh, you know, I believe, you know, the devil wants done. But as a Christian, what you should be focusing on is getting the leaven out of your life. And that is what this entire presentation is about. Um, and so you can find that. And I'll try to get the link and put it in the chat um so that way you've got it uh for you know after this presentation if you are feeling a little you know trepidation or fear look i get it these, these are not light-hearted topics but that that's why we do these that's why we do these these shows not only this one but the show that we did that i did on my channel is so you can be edified, so you know exactly what you should be focusing on. And the reality is, is each and every one of us should be focusing on our personal relationship with Jesus Christ and making sure we are walking uprightly in his path and walking with the Spirit. And hopefully that episode will, you know, give you all the information you need to do that better. Amen to that. So if you haven't caught up what's going on in the news or you've been living on the rock, so uh, this coming Monday, April 8th, 2024, is supposed to be a solar total eclipse. Now I want to start off with the Bible, you know, a couple of Bible verses here like we did last week. Jeremiah 10, 2 says, Thus says the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. And so, in other words, don't let it bother you. That's what it's saying. Don't be like the pagans, which are heathens, right? Don't be like them. Because they're all worried. They do all these rituals. Don't be like them. Don't worry about these things. However, the Bible does tell us, and in Genesis 1, 14 through 19, and God said, let there be lights in the... I, I, I apologize. And, and one second. I did this last week, and you think I would learn from my mistake. Nope, I didn't. So... Um, when I pull this slide up, let me pull up the real verse, yeah, because uh, when I pull the slide up, it just completely throws me off here. Uh, so one, hang on a second, let me get the King James version of the Bible because uh, this completely just uh, throws me off. So right, yeah, it says, um, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs, for seasons, and for days and years. So now when you bring this stuff up in churches, they'll be like, oh, no, no, stay away from that because they don't understand the difference between co uh, biblical cosmology and uh, astrology. As cult astrology has nothing to do with this. It's perverted of this stuff here. They take God's things and pervert it. We're not talking about fortune telling nothing like that. The Bible does say yeah. right there, let the lights, which is the stars and all that stuff, be for signs and seasons, for days and for years, and let them be for lights yeah. in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and the soul. So it's Genesis chapter one. So that the Bible does tell us, but also be don't be dismayed, don't be troubled by it, because these signs are going to come. And also, 
you got the world out there. Uh, I, like I said, I mean, when we started off the show, how many of the people out there, you got channels out there preaching as a go to the rapture uh, uh, Monday or the start of the three days of darkness, which is not biblical prophecy, and all these other wild eye, like new age things, like, oh, we're going to move to the age of enlightenment and all this crazy wild eye stuff cataclysmic damage and that, then you got some wackos out there trying to say oh no 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 it's not the sun and moon there's a planet coming between uh the earth and sun. i mean you know, i'm sorry the moon and the sun it's not really the sun lining up and you got all these wacky conspiracy theories and some people now saying um uh, they're going to turn hop on no no there's nothing to do with hop or whatever so we just try to clear up the, all the confusion because remember the lord is not the author of confusion and we're going to try to uh clear up this confusion out there because there's a lot of it there really is. You know what I mean? It's crazy. You know, so, um, yeah. So, um, first thing we want to start off with, uh, right off the bat here, I want to start off with the CERN thing, because uh, if you don't know what CERN is, there's a giant hydron collider. It's a large hydron collider. It smashes atoms together at the speed of light. And experiment hopes to discover subatomic particles that exist inside the atoms. So, this is a $20 billion accelerator that kicks kicks on in uh, the 2040s, but they're going to be doing a test run this Monday during the eclipse. And it says, CERN to test the world's most powerful particle accelerator during April's solar eclipse to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. Invisible matter is also known as dark matter. And I know uh, Trey wanted to talk about that. You get some slides for that too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean... I think it's very important for us to understand before we do anything else to have, you know, w what exactly is dark matter? And I just got to pull up my slides here. I thought I had them pulled up. Sorry. Um, here we go. You know, it always helps to have a proper definition to mm -hmm. know what we're working with. And this is, this is uh, dark matter as defined by NASA. And it says that it is, uh, it says, like ordinary matter, dark matter takes up the space and uh, takes up space and holds mass, but it doesn't reflect, absorb, or radiate light. At least not enough for us to detect yet. And I mean that's straight from NASA's website. So we're dealing with some sort of matter, doesn't reflect light. Um, it doesn't. It it absorbs it. There's no. It doesn't radiate light. And I mean honestly. What the the first verse that comes to mind here is is um, John one, and I'm just going to read that real quick if that's all right. Sure. Um, you know, in John one it says this right here. It says um, it says in him was John first oh John one verse four in him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. You know, I'm not a scientist. I don't. I don't really know. Like I said, this is out of my wheelhouse. But what I can tell you is, is nothing is ever exactly like it seems in this world. Especially mm -hmm. if you're a Bible believer, everything is always going to come back to spiritual things. And as soon as I see something that doesn't is it absorbs light and you know light can't radiate within it that's exactly what i seen that's exactly what i think of the light shineth in the darkness the darkness comprehended it not and and the, the main reason i want to make this point is there are like i read an article while i was researching this week and it was a physicist who called himself he was basically he was comparing dark matter as a metaphor for God. And he was like, you know, he was like, as a physics student, you know, the, the whole metaphors of light and God as a shepherd doesn't really resonate with me. And he, I went through it and it just seemed really mystical. And that was what sent me down the path <laughs> that I'm going to be talking about with some of the stuff we're going to be talking about um, here in these next few slides. You know, I started looking into it and the first thing I wanted to know was, okay, what does the occult have to say about dark matter and things like that? And the next slide, you know, <clears throat> this is actually from the website Medium. And it says, according to NASA, the universe today comprises of 70% dark energy, 25% dark matter, 
like black holes. And uh, according to what I can tell, the best research when it comes to black holes, which keep in mind, nobody's ever actually seen a black hole. They really don't know a lot about it. But the theory that I've been looking at all weekend states that that outer rim around the event horizon of a black hole. And if you look at like the computer generated images, you'll see it. It's just this dark ring that's around it. And what they're saying is, is that's actually where the dark matter that absorbs the light that because they say a black hole can't, you know, light can't exist within a black hole either. And uh, they say it's because of that outer ring of dark matter that's around it. And I mean, you can get super technical with it. What's the difference between dark matter, dark energy, dark energy, they say actually uh, is pushing the universe. Now, keep in mind, this is in the paradigm of the ever expanding heliocentric model of the universe, right? According to this theory, what they're saying is, is that dark matter is actually what's causing the, or dark energy is what's causing the universe to ever expand. But dark matter actually acts like gravity and is holding everything together in its circuits and things like that. I, I am guessing that is where this physics student, because they never give their name, it's just physics student, um, is getting that, that metaphor of God as dark energy. Um, but I want you to really pay attention because this is this is basically the Hindu concept of of dark matter and dark energy. So it goes on to say five percent matter like stars, galaxy, planets, etc. Now these are all direct quotes from this article that is linked at the bottom. That's the source for this. So the article goes on to say in yogic in yogic parlance, consciousness is the intrinsic attribute of the void, and the dark energy is prana. Or the life force. Now, if you know anything about the prana, that is basically this ethereal spirit realm that is actually where Nikola Tesla claimed he got his ideas for his inventions. So already we're seeing an occultic tie to the theories that are coming out of astrophysics and, you know, things like that. And this this theoretical physics of dark matter, because they'll tell you right off the hand uh, they really don't have a grasp of what dark matter is. These are just what they think it is. Theories, yeah. Um, yeah, and I, I found that very interesting because all of a sudden these theories have a lot of ties to the occult already. It goes on to say dark energy is repulsive in contrast to gravity, which is attractive. And so galaxies are continuing to move away from one another and the universe is continuing to expand. Now, in this article, it goes on to quote the Dalai Lama and how he says that, you know, even though the universe will pass away, consciousness never will because it's eternal. And I find that very fascinating because even now, as we talk, this concept of this new age Christ consciousness is spreading everywhere, even to the point where Candace Owens recently said something about the Christ consciousness on her Twitter in this whole debacle that's been going on with the Daily Wire since they've parted ways. Um, I, I find all of this very, very fascinating. Um, and me personally, I just, I don't think that this is a coincidence. I think it's very, under, very important for us to understand. As we go into this, we're starting to look at CERN because CERN fires up their Hadron Collider. They're doing a lot of research on dark matter. But if you look at why NASA states they're ro launching these rockets to begin with, is so they can do research about the dark matter that is allegedly surrounding this eclipse. And yet we have these theories and these, these articles being written on how dark energy and dark matter are very much like the void and the consciousness and the prana. And it, I mean, is any of this, a, it, I mean, tell me if I'm crazy here. I should have made myself a tinfoil hat before I came in here, but it's already hot and I really don't want to sweat. Sounds anymore. all cultic to me, um, man. Yeah. No. And I mean, I don't think that these are coincidence because no. here's the reality that you have to understand. First John or say, excuse me. Second John starting in verse nine. If a man transgresseth not, uh, and uh, if a man transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, he hath not God. Well, in First John, he talks something very similar about if how you don't have, it, you know, if if you deny Christ, um, you know, you don't have the Father and you're an antichrist, right? What basically the point I'm getting at here is, there's only ultimately two sides. There is no neutral ground here. 
you're either serving Christ or by default, you're automatically serving Satan. Because let me assure you, they're both very real. And you, I, I don't understand this concept of how we, oh, we just have these, these scientists. They don't believe in God, but, you know, they're just, they're on neutral ground. That's absolutely absurd. Because the reality is, is if you don't have the blood of Christ protecting you and covering you and protecting you from the spiritual realm, you are going to be subject to the wiles of the devils that ultimately serve Satan. Yeah, and the article you know? here about CERN, and uh, basically to give you more understand what CERN is, so basically it's a large hadron collider, that's what it's called, a ring of superconducting magnets to boost the energy and ensure that a $4 billion machine was in working condition. And so it goes down here on to say uh, CERN researchers use protons due to them being heavier particles that weigh the weight allows much loss. I mean, lower energy. I'm sorry, loss per through the accelerator of the particles like protons. And um, so it goes on here. I just want to get to the meat and potatoes of this here. But next month's experiment, which is talk about next week, uh, next month, which is April 8th, proved that the beam's trajectory was off and did full circle. But after the tinkering with the mechanics, the team watched and wondered as the beam circled, accelerated in less than 20 minutes. So on April 8th, the team will send beams through the tunnel where they are, where they are collided. Now, mind you, this tunnel is 17 miles long. It goes on, it's right under Switzerland in the giant circle. And the team will be on a hunt for dark matter, which makes up about 20% of the mass of the universe, but there's never been seen or proven. So this is that from the popular mechanics. Uh, the dark matter has never been seen or even proven. So they're going to spend all this money and all this time to look for dark matter. And it's not only them. You know I mean, it's in, and uh, also, I want to bring this up real quick too, since we, before we move on to the rockets uh, about CERN. They're talking about uh, physicists found a ghost haunting the world's uh, most famous particle accelerator. Uh, not like actually ghosts, but there's uh, energy, like a ghostly energy, basically, that they don't know where it comes from. You know what I mean? And uh, so they call it the ghost, you know what I mean? So it's an invisible force that has eluded detection with CERN's halls until now. So they're wondering where this energy is coming from. So CERN's super proton synchrotron will turn uh, 50 in 2026 and has resonated a ghost. So using mathematics, physics, uh, measure the model of how the resonate lines intersect and remodeling a 3D shape over time requires a 40, uh, 4D system of uh, equations. So... And again, it's um, uh, it's that they had isolated a resonant ghost that affects how particles have inside the super proton syndrome. I was, I was a synchrotron. I'm sorry. It's 3D shape that shifts over time, meaning it's the best measure in 4D. And the secret is the same reason you'll spill your coffee walking back to your desk and the super bounce uh, to your friends on the trampoline. So let's talk about this. Um, you know, this energy that projects itself so to speak i mean if the, if i could just like simplify it the best way they're trying to study where this comes from so now when we get to the whole cern yeah. thing we did many shows on this guys and the, the and the thing is like there's official story right and it talks about here about the big bang theory they want to uh, smash protons together right to recreate the big bang lie you know right there uh cern will shoot them mm -hmm. down a 17 mile long tunnel at nearly the speed of light to recreate conditions a second after the Big Bang. So, which we know the Big Bang is no such thing as the Big Bang Theory. There was a Jesuit who created that. It's a lie. It's not even scientific. There's no yeah. Big Bang Theory. We talked about that not long ago, too. Yeah. Yeah, on the show last time, we, you know what I mean? You know, when we did the show on the Jesuits. And uh, the Big Bang, it's, uh, it's a big dud. There ain't no Big Bang Theory. So, the thing is, that's the cover story. But we know darn well what this whole yeah. thing is for. This is the open portals. I mean, people from CERN themselves stated they want to use this to open portals to put stuff in, take stuff out. This is, uh, we'll talk about, this is uh, some biblical stuff, guys. This is high-end occultic stuff yeah. that they're doing. It's nothing at all to do with the Big Bang. They know damn well that the Big Bang doesn't exist. You know what I mean? This is more... Sure. Well, and they... Yeah. I I'm sorry to cut no, you off. I, I just want to let people know. This is easily verifiable. You can look it up on CERN's website. They talk about the 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 implications that this work has in opening doors mm -hmm. to parallel dimensions. Well, that's just modern science talk for opening portals. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's the same thing. You know, if you've ever seen Indiana Jones and the kingdom of the crystal skull at the end, there's this big bulb headed alien 
down in South America or Central America or wherever they're at. And it flies off in a flying saucer. And he was like, so they're extraterrestrials. And John Hurt's character says they're actually interdimensional beings. You know, there's that famous quote from Aleister Crowley. And Dan, you and I have talked about this before on mm -hmm. past shows. Um, you know, he says, you know, today you know them as angels and demons. Tomorrow they'll be something else. Like all of this stuff fits in together. There's always, it, 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 is, an, it is spectacular to me how... All of this stuff can go back to something occultic. You know, the first time you really see, and, and this is, you, you know, if you study, you have Aleister Crowley does his Amhalantra working. Um, then this is actually goes to later, you have Jack Parsons and uh, L. Ron Hubbard out in the desert doing their Babylon working ritual. Um, and if you look at some of the accounts, it talks about how after this, uh, you know, they're all around there, whatever, uh, at, you know, Jet Propulsion Laboratories, and they start seeing these manifestations of, you know, what they called extraterrestrial, uh, you know, activity. And you can look at it from the time that Aleister Crowley, you know, whether it's his ritual he did down in Cairo where he met with... Um, Iwas, who then dictated the Book of the Law to him. And then you can go from there. And, uh, uh, you get these this exponential increase of UFO sightings and phenomenon. And now you can pair it up with things like CERN, who is talking about interdimensional portals and, you know, all of this implication that you can find right on their website. You have NASA doing their stuff. And, of course, their rockets, guess who they're made by? You guessed it, Jet Propulsion Laboratories, um, which, by the way, if you don't know, um, the Ordo Templi Orientis, or the OTO, the United States chapter, there for a while, was meeting in the Parsonage, which was the home of Jack Parsons. Like, there, there's, there's so many occultic ties to this that, and it's just like Dan said, you, you can't write this stuff. You can't make it up. No. It's it's insane, but that's how inner circle, outer circle, esoteric and exoteric philosophies and teachings work. You and know, you got a um, you got slide on extra dimensional research. Yeah, yeah, I do. Up? As a matter of fact, um, and I believe this is the one that I took from CERN's website. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Right from the CERN's website, right there. Yeah, it says this is a quote. Another way of revealing extra dimensions would be through the production of microscopic black holes. What exactly we would detect would depend on the number of extra dimensions, the mass of the black hole, the size of the dimensions, and the energy at which the black hole occurs. If micro black holes do appear in the collisions created by the LHC, or the Large Hadron Collider, they would disintegrate rapidly in around 10 to 27 seconds. They would delay into standard model or supersymmetric particles, creating events containing an exceptional number of tracks in our detectors, which we would easily spot. Finding more on any of these subjects would open the door to yet unknown possibilities. And that is straight from home.cern forward slash science forward slash physics forward slash extra dimensions, gravitons, and tiny black holes. I mean, they talk about it right on their website. Now, what I find interesting about it is when you compare it to the slide before this, and and I'm sorry, Dan, they, they, I sent you those slides in the wrong order despite sending oh, them to you three different times. <laughs> um, but if you go to Enoch 25, I find it very interesting because in Enoch, or excuse me, Enoch chapter 21, verses 1 through 5, it says, and I proceeded to where things were chaotic, and I saw there something horrible. I saw neither a heaven above nor a firmly founded earth, but a place chaotic and horrible. And there I saw seven stars of the heaven bound together in it like great mountains and burning with fire. Then I said, for what sin are they bound, and on what account have they been cast hither? Then said Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me and was chief over them, and said, Enoch, why dost thou ask, and why art thou eager for the truth? Now the passage goes on to talk about 
how these stars were imprisoned from the moment of creation because they did not come forth in their season. But here we have this chaotic, horrible, black void is what it seems to be describing, right? And there's these stars which are talked about like they are entities and they're trapped here. Well, what's interesting after that, and this is really the last slide I have on this subject, is you can head to uh, Revelation 9, uh, 9, 1 through 4, and it says this, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit, and he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, and the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened, by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, and the scorpion, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was recommended to them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither give any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have the seal of God in their foreheads. Now, I didn't send you this slide, but I had another slide after this. Mm. And it said, and it just was Revelation 9-11, and it said this. Revelation 9-11 says, And they had a king over them, which was is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but the, in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon, which means destroyer. Now, isn't it interesting that outside of CERN, they have this circle covered in flame, which, you know, most flame produces smoke, and in this is Shiva, the Hindu god of death and destruction. Now, it is also said, yeah. and me personally, despite looking this up, I wasn't able to find any concrete proof. I'm sure it's out there. Um, but there is a, there is, it is said, like I said, I can't verify this, but I find it interesting. Supposedly, CERN is built on top of an ancient temple to Apollo. Because if you do the research, the etymology between Apollyon and Apollo. Now, the way that word, word works is uh, apo is a, it's a Greek prefix. And so you can put it in front of a bunch of words, right? But the theory is, is that Apollyon and Apollo actually stem from the same Greek word, which means to destroy. Mm. Now, we know for a fact Apollyon is linked to this word, but a lot of Greek researchers believe that Apollo is linked to the same word too, which I find absolutely fascinating. Mm. Um, you know, could it be a coincidence? Yeah, possibly. Um, but I think that if you look at the fact that it's supposedly built on it, on the, the, the Apollo site, um, could that be a coincidence? Yeah, that could be too. What makes me think that it's not though, is the fact that Shiva, the Greek, uh, the Greek, the, uh, Hindu God of death and destruction is out front in what looks like a flaming stargate. Now, I find that interesting because, you know, it talks about smoke coming out of it, but and this is just me. Could it be that this smoke isn't actually smoke, that it's that misty-looking darkness that is around a black hole, like the dark matter? Maybe. I think that's fascinating. I, I can't mm -hmm. prove it, but I, but I think it's, it's, it's an interesting coincidence, if nothing else. Um, you know, this is... In, in in my mind, and look, I have been laughed at this by by family. You know, I've, I've mentioned years ago when I first learned about CERN, I was like, I would not be surprised if CERN plays a part on Earth, you know, here in the physical realm of helping be the ones who open that, you know, bottomless pit that the locusts come out of. And, of course, my family's all laughing at me because this particular side of my family, they're all preterists. So they don't think that any of this stuff's going to happen anyway. Um, and that's fine. I don't mind people laughing at me. That's why I make jokes half the time. I'm a very, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an easy person to laugh at. And that, that is perfectly fine with me because either I'm going to be right or I'm going to be wrong. Ultimately, it doesn't matter, but at least I can be, you know, biblically scientific about this, look at it, come to conclusions, present a hypothesis, and we'll see whether or not it comes true. It's not like I'm saying, thus saith the Lord. I just... I find these things interesting. I find it, you know, it's very fascinating. When you read the scriptures, there's a lot of supernatural stuff going on that's very open because it's written from a supernatural source. Mm -hmm. But you have to put yourself in the shoes of the people who would have been there. How, how did they 
how would they have interpreted it? And I think what's really interesting about that is when you read the book of Esther. The book of Esther is really one of the only books, in, and I think it's the only book in the Bible, where we're seeing it entirely through the eyes of humans. And there is no well, to, direct intervention where it's obviously said, you know, like, you know, in Genesis 11, you see that, you know, you know, he said, let us go down and confound their languages, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you don't see any of that in Esther. And I find that fascinating because I think we're giving a glimpse of what the intervention of God looks like through human eyes. And could this be something that's similar? I, I don't know. But well, I think it would up, be man. foolish to rule it out. To back you up, if anybody thinks you're foolish or anything, uh, this is right off of CERN's website. Right from the horse's mouth, you can go, there's the link right there. Go look for yourself. But look, right, there's the statue of uh, Shiva, right? Look, Lord Shiva statue unveiled. On June 18th, uh, CERN unveiled an unusual new landmark, a two-meter tall statue of the Indian deity Lord Shiva. Why would, and that's, look at the ring and the portal that's standing, the goddess of destruction. (laughs) <laughs> you know, hello. I mean, like, if you can't put those two together, oh, it's just coincidence they put that there. No, there's a reason why they put that there because that circle around Shiva is a portal. It's to bring destruction. It's literally the same thing CERN is, like to the T. If you look at CERN, if you look at all the ancient portals, all the um, hieroglyphics of the ancient portals and the actual ancient portals, it's the same thing as CERN, like to the T. You know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. crazy, man. And uh, if you... I don't know how much more I can tell people, but yeah, go right to CERN's website if you think this is a hoax. You know, sure. so this is like very I mean, something sinister going on. Yeah, that's so that's why we yeah. should be concerned about this whole thing. You know what I mean? In, in this Absolutely. manner, you know what I mean? Not be worried about it, but you know, not to sound like a hypocrite, but we should be, you know, concerned that CERN could possibly pull something off. We don't know. You know what I sure. mean? Sure. Not only that, but I mean, I'm a proponent in social engineering and mm. predictive programming. And there's a reason that the first Stargate movie is them opening a portal and this being this, you know, super advanced being masquerading as an ancient Egyptian god is there. And is it any coincidence that the actor they got to play Ra in that movie is actually identifies as androgynous? I don't think that's a coincidence because over and over again, these entities are described as androgynous. You know, um, it's just, all you have to do is read the occultic writings, which, you know, I don't recommend that everybody do, but um, over and over again, people like Albert Pike, Madame Blavatsky, uh, Manly P. Hall, they talk about how man before the fall was, they believe, androgynous. They believe that when it says that he made them male and female, that he meant male and female at the same time. And that God physically removed Eve from Adam. And obviously, I I believe that's absurd, but it just goes to show you that these people worship androgynous beings. Mm -hmm. And here we have this actor who identifies as androgynous playing Ra. And you really can't tell if you watch that movie, you're like, is this a male or a female? And... I, I don't know. It's just one of those things where if we have yet another coincidence. I mean, you come to your own conclusions. I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'm just here to present the evidence that I have found. And, you know, you can come to your own conclusions. But I find that interesting, to say the mm-hmm. least. Hmm. Well, he has some more interesting stuff, right? So uh, Trey brought it up. Uh, NASA is going to shoot three rockets into next week's solar eclipse. Here's why, right? So this is from Interesting Engineering, whatever. Uh, three rockets will co- collect data to help NASA scientists understand how solar eclipses impact our atmosphere, right? So in the article here, it says millions are eagerly awaiting the April 8th solar eclipse, uh, total eclipse, which will cover parts of the United States, Canada, Mexico in darkness. While spectators await the phenomenon with glasses, NASA is preparing a series of rockets that will send into the, the eclipse shadow. So three rockets will collect data to help scientists understand how the uh, solar eclipses impact our atmosphere and understanding the effect of the solar eclipse on the ionosphere. So this is what they're saying. They want to study what's going on in the ionosphere when, during this darkness, right? So the, uh, the effects of solar eclipses are well documented. 
The sudden shift into darkness is known to cause sharp temperature drops and even change animal behavior, which this is true. However, scientists don't know a great deal about the effect of solar eclipse on the ionosphere. So in the article, too, they talk about, well, yeah, I'll just read it here. The ionosphere is part of the upper atmosphere, which stretches between altitudes of 55 to 310 miles. The ionosphere is full of electrons and atoms that repeatedly separate and recombine during the irregular night eclipse. So solar system, I'm sorry, solar eclipses interrupt this pattern, and their full effect is not fully understood. So this professor here of engineering, uh, I'm not even going to bother trying to pronounce that name, but yeah, so this professor of engineering physics at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University has compared the effect to the motorboat ripple effect through the water. You know, you turn on the water, you know, calm water and it sends ripple effects through the water. It is even known to interfere with the radio and satellite communications. The same kind of thing that they were saying about CERN with the dark matter. So NASA is doing the same thing. They're, they're literally studying the dark matter with this because they think the dark matter interferes with the communications and all that stuff. So this invisible force that they're looking to, right? So now here's where it gets interesting, right? So the scientist says that his team will launch three atmospheric perpetrations around the eclipse path called APAP. And I'm going to show you something really weird, right? So APEP, so, uh, sounding rockets from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility on Wallops Island, Virginia. The three rockets will be launched before, during, and after the eclipse takes place. So these rockets are supposedly going to um, observe and try to do tests of, and you know, if it goes into the talks more about dark matter and everything else. But here's where this really gets quickly, right? So we understand the, the spiritual stuff that came right out of CERN, right? Here's where it really gets quirky, right? So APEP, what does that sound like? So this here, hang on, let me get to my slides. So this guy here, all right, this is, uh, let me see if I can read it through this thing. So APEP is also, uh, it's an Egyptian deity. It's a Coptic Egyptian deity, ancient Greek, uh, it's a serpent deity, that's what it is. Well, it's ancient deity who is embedded in darkness and disorder, and thus uh, the opponent of light in me. Look at the eclipse behind it. This is a serpent. And if you notice, right, he has, he has where it really gets crazy, right? So <laughs> uh, let me show you what this is. Uh, uh, hang on a second. Just bear with me, guys. And uh, So uh, see, uh, it's, a, it's a deity, right, that uh, circumferences the light. That's what it does. The eclipse suffocates the light, right? That's what this deity is, right? Now... If you don't know what this is, this is an ancient Ouroboros. It's a serpent or a dragon biting its own tail. And not a coincidence that this is also a serpent too. You know, this uh, ancient uh, APAP. Again, APEP, it's exactly what NASA, <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, uh, NASA is on. That's what they named, why would you name your rockets the exact same thing as his deity? And he was a malevolent force. Not to mention the fact that every rocket that they have had is named after some sort of false god. Yeah. Like that. I mean, you've got Orion, you've got Apollo. Um, I don't remember what it was before Apollo, but it was another Greek god. Um, like this. I mean, this is right along with NASA's track record. Mm -hmm. It's just this time they're being more blatant about it because you can definitely look at the the logo, the little red fork behind NASA. And it's a serpent's tongue. They're just, they don't care anymore. Let me see if I get that um, logo there. So if you look at the logo, yeah, it's a serpent's tongue. And NASA means deceiver in Hebrew. They're liars. <laughs> Plain and simple. They're, yep. they're massive manipulators that come from the Nazi rat line, literally. Like, not even joking. The Nazis created NASA that were brought here from Operation yeah. Paperclip. You know what I mean? So when you put all yep. this stuff together, guys, I mean... Uh, this ancient Egyptian uh, so-called god, yeah, he was a malevolent force who could never be entirely vanquished. And every night, as the sun traveled uh, through the underworld, across the sky, a roar would uh, fill the fresh, um, fill the air and would launch his attack. So, I mean, put all this together, guys. And we're not saying a giant serpent is going to come out of the eclipse. We're not saying that. 
We're not saying anything like yeah. that. But this is the occultic garbage that gets rammed in our faces. Why do you think sure. you, you think they just mysteriously picked that purposely? For the eclipse, for the eclipse, named this after an Egyptian god that does the same thing. Well, you think that's purpose? Um, I mean, accidentally picked that way? No. These people know what they're no. doing. Everything about NASA is all occultic, literally. There's a secret society gonna, that run this place. I'm going to back you up again because you talked about the Ouroboros. Yeah. Um, this is the Guide to Ministry for Masons um, by, you know, David and Donna Carrico. Uh, this is from, you know, Section 18, Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And this is what it says. It says, another explanation of the Eliphas, uh, Eliphas Levi occult symbol is contained in the following comment taken from page 2. 53 in a bridge to light. It is a direct quotation from set page 734 in Morals and Dogma, and both are a fittish Scottish Rite Masonic books. By the way, every, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Dan, but I believe every na uh, astronaut from NASA that's been in the moon landing project, every single one of them were Freemasons. Yep. I know for a fact Buzz Aldrin was because he carried the Masonic flag on Apollo 11. But it says, the snake that surrounds the symbol, this symbol, is clearly called the Holy Spirit. This explanation should make any Freemason claiming to be a Christian demit from the lodge in a heartbeat. How could anyone with an ounce of fear of the fear of God in their lives say such a thing about the Holy Spirit or support the sale and distribution of such blasphemy? We pray that the many morally good men that are in the lodge learn of this and they will repent and come out of Freemasonry. This is the quote from A Bridge to Light by Rex, uh, by Rex R. Hutchins. By the way, here's the logo. It is clearly the symbol, uh, the, 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 the seal of Solomon. And you can see around it is the Ouroboros. And this is what it says. There is a life principle of the world, a universal agent wherein are two natures and a double current of love, and wrath. It is a ray detached, a ray detached from the glory of the sun. It is the body of the Holy Spirit, the universal agent, the serpent devouring its own tail. From the mysteries of magic by Elifus Levi, what is more absurd and more impious than to attribute the name of Lucifer to the devil is uh, that is to personified evil. The intellectual Lucifer is the spirit of intelligence and love. It is the paraclete, it is the Holy Spirit, while the physical Lucifer is the great agent of universal magnetism. That's I mean, crazy, you heard man. it right there. Not only did they correct, they did not only did Rex Hutchins talk about um the serpent devouring its own tail being the Holy Spirit, but he talked about the ray of the sun. Why else? I mean, this is an occult ritual that we're seeing before us. They are sending a rocket named after a serpent deity up to a ray of the sun. Are you kidding me? <laughs> right in your face. You cannot make this stuff up. No. Right in your face, man. And, uh, pfft. you know what I mean? And it's, it's, it really is. It's, uh, it's just crazy. <laughs> and you could go do the research for yourself. And that's why I tell people all the time. Do your own research. Don't, don't just take our words for it. And we understand if you don't believe in it, I'm not going to hold you to, you know, against anything against you because there are um, a wave of disinformation videos out there all over YouTube, Facebook, and all that, all these wild out there. So don't blame me. But what I do want you to do, go do your own research. Uh, because the thing is, you might not take this serious, right? But guess who does take it serious? Very serious. It's the people who run this world. The people who run this world, they don't answer to nobody but Lucifer himself. You know what I mean? So they know what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing in certain rituals and all that, and they pervert the things of God. Why do you think they wait for eclipses and all these uh, certain holidays and whatever, astrological events, I mean, because they take the things of God and pervert them. They have to do these. And if you look on um, the, all the satanic rituals, and then you have to emphasize as many levels of Satanism, not all of them do these things, but... Uh, the highest levels of Satanism, they do things according to star dates and certain things that happen, astrological things, and they pervert it massively. You know what I mean? They do child sacrifice, all kinds of nasty things on these holidays. I mean, these uh, uh, dates and all that. And it's very significant. And this, this is ancient occultism in our faces today. And people don't take it serious. They don't. But the world elite, they, they very well take it serious, guys. And if you look at Buzz Aldrin, right? He puts his... Um, Left hand in his pocket. Like, who does that? Who does it? Just, you know, 
or in his coat, whatever the case, or in his pocket. Nobody does that, and that's Buzz Aldrin's uh, Masonic uh, membership right there. These oh, people yeah, not are only that, but you you go talk to Buzz Aldrin about any of this stuff and call him out on it, yeah. like that one guy did about the moon landing. Told him to put his hand on a Bible and got punched in the face. Yep. I mean, look. The whole point of this is hopefully if you are watching this and you've never experienced any of this before, you this is the first time you're hearing any of it. The whole point of this is t- for you to wake up and realize that there is more going on in this world than what meets your eye. And you need to know it because the powers that be, they know it. You know, Paul says in Ephesians 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against the spiritual wickedness in high places, right? And every single one of those. And Dan and I have done a show about this as well. This was, I think it was one of the first shows that I ever did on Spiritual Warfare Friday. And we talked about, um, you know, spiritual warfare mm. and how there were there is literally a hierarchy of celestial beings at work that the rulers of this world actively serve. And that's why I said you either serve Christ or you serve Satan. Mm-hmm. There is no in between. And there's a lot of unfortunately, there's a lot of Satanists out there that are doing it just to be edgy. They, they want to go against the grain of the and when I and understand when I talk about the Christianity of this nation, I'm talking about from a more of a moral perspective than a spiritual perspective. But they see the the somewhat Christian morality that this nation was founded on. You know, as far as like, you know, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Mm. You know, the, the the tenets of the Ten Commandments that made it into our our fundamental traditional views in America and they want to go against the grain having no idea that by you know sitting here being trolls and worshiping Satan in a joking way and I'm talking about the lower levels of Satanism that they're actually serving Satan and Anton LaVey said it you know he said that he had to make this palatable for the masses but that the top levels they actually do serve Satan Mm -hmm. I mean um, I forget who it was but there was a girl who was involved with the Manson murders and Joe Schimmel over at um, at uh, Good Fight Ministries, he interviewed her and she came out and told him all of this, you know, because she she knew Anton LaVey. Um, you know, that there there's there's a big scam going on in the kingdom of darkness to where, you know. Satan would love nothing more than to get the masses to serve him in the most ignorant way. And here's the thing. For you guys that are in the church, but you're just carnal Christians or whatever, you go to church on Sunday, maybe Wednesday, but you live the way you want the rest of the week. And we all have a tendency to do it if we're not careful. That's why you have to, you have to constantly choose every day to follow the Lord. Um, Satan, he doesn't care if you if you believe in Jesus. He doesn't care that if you believe that God is real. He doesn't care if you go to church. As long as you're not actively serving Jesus, you're still serving him. And that's what I mean when I say that he would love for the masses to serve him in ignorance. Like, this, this, this is what he wants. You know, because ultimately, either way, as long as you're not serving Christ, he still gets what he wants. Mm-hmm. You know, his end... His end game, he think, will still play out. And I'm, I'm here to warn everybody that unless you are following the word of God, if you are, unless you are submitting yourself to the authority of Jesus Christ, and you know, there's this big, there's this big spat going on right now about Christ is King, right? And how it's anti-Semitic. And I'm going to tell you that Christ is King isn't good enough. Anybody can say Christ is King. Anybody can look. Mm-hmm. I can say that you know, King Charles is King. Doesn't mean that I serve him. Yeah. See, here's the thing. You can say Christ is king all you want. But until you submit to his authority and you say Christ is Lord, especially Lord of your life, and you are submitting yourself to his authority and you are following his commandments and you're following his ways, you're following his word, you're walking the path that he set out, 
you're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, he says, many will say in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out many devils and in thy name done many marvelous works. And I will say to them in that day, depart from me. I never knew thee, ye workers of iniquity. That Greek word iniquity is anomia, ah, without anomia, law, lawless people, people that aren't following Christ's commandments, people that aren't following the moral law that God laid out, people who live the way they want and were still able to do wonderful works in the name of Jesus, and it wasn't good enough. Why? Because they did not submit to Christ being Lord of their life. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. And you're right, and these people, they serve darkness because it's not just this stuff going on, too. Uh, in the order of Tempo Orientis, and especially the order of Thelema, uh, this coming up here is called the Equinox of the Gods during these eclipses and all that. So um, there's, a, I mean, there's a lot of stuff I didn't get to research yet, but what I do know uh, from watching some videos from uh, former Masons and all that, uh, that yes, this uh, coming up here is called the Equinox of the Gods. And now this is ancient occultism being uh, like basically practiced here in the world. So again, you might not take this serious, you might not be like, you know, whatever, but the elite do take this serious. So I, do, it was my fault, I should have done more research on this here, uh, but to explain it a little better. But just the fact that you know that the Order of Temple Orientis and uh, the Order of Thelema, they take this very serious. There's a clip coming up called the Equinox of the Gods. And the gods they're talking about are like satanic gods, literally. They're not, they're not even gods, they're fake gods, whatever the case. But there is a list of them. There's probably more that we don't even know about. Uh, and like today, somebody was sending me videos on uh, this one woman, Bill O'Connell, actually, he sent me a video. This one woman thinks that there's a planet crossing between the sun and the moon that's going to cause the eclipse. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of theories out there, a lot of people out there with these different things. And uh, But the thing is, yeah, they take it serious, but the guys, you just need to keep your radars on because we're not saying the world's going to blow up. God, and here's the thing too, God will not let anything happen to this world that is not part of his plan. So people say, oh, there's got to be a meteor, comet, or this, got to, no, nothing's going to destroy the world. If it's not part, if it's not written in here, it's not going to happen. There's going to be no floods, because the Bible says there ain't. There's going to be no God, asteroid that's going to wipe up the planet, because the Bible says it's not going to work that way. So don't let NASA and all these people want, you know, scare you with all this garbage, you know what I mean? And it gets more. Uh, there's more, all right? So I'm going to play this quick news clip. Actually, I'm just going to tell you because I don't want to deal with the copyright thing, even though it is public information. So actually, I'm just going to play it because this is, uh, does, you know, for YouTube out there, this does fall under the Fair Use Act. So for criticism and comments. So this is a news clip, yeah. It's spooky season, and some see a devil coming this way. A devil comet three times the size of Mount Everest is heading towards the Earth. It was quoted saying, I'm not a regular comet. I'm a cool comet. All that cosmic chaos over a so-called devil comet, named for those horn-looking things. <laughs> It's about the same size as the city of Dallas. It's flying at tens of thousands of miles per hour, and it's getting a lot closer to us. Close enough to panic? Well, if you believe astrophysicists, no. You do not need to worry about this comet. The comet's actually named 12P Pons Brooks after two guys who spotted it way back in the 19th century. We don't know exactly how long it's been flying around, but experts say it orbits the sun every 70 years or so. And now, as you can see from this NASA animation, it's taking another lap through our solar system at a safe distance. The closest it's going to get to Earth is hundreds of millions of miles away. It's actually going to be farther away from the Earth than the sun is. So what's the deal with those devil horns? See, comets are cold. They're basically mounds of dust and ice, according to NASA, leftovers from the formation of the solar system. But when they get closer to the sun, they heat up. What is happening on the surface of this comet is something called cryovolcanoes, which is like a frozen volcano operating uh, barely above absolute zero, where instead of a uh, rock with liquid rock squirting out of it like a normal volcano, you have ice and then liquid ice, a.k.a. water, squirting out of it. And then when the comet passes far enough away, it refreezes. He says that activity might be what's causing that devil horn effect. 
And although the comet will continue to race toward Earth all the way through spooky season and early 2024, the devil is keeping its distance, remaining a cool couple hundred million miles away, even at its closest point next spring. All right, well, let's bring in Noah Pransky right now. Okay, for all of us space... So, um, long story short, they talked about this months ago. Right now, what they're saying now is during this eclipse, uh, you might be able to see this Horn Comet may be visible during the 2024 total eclipse, which is coming Monday. So, an unusual Horn Comet is now visible in the night sky and may even be a rare appearance during the total eclipse of April 8th of 2024. So it's just like, um, all right, a horned comet, a devil comet, they're calling it, whatever the case. And you got those, uh, you know, when you see that video, they play the contemplation, a couple of videos of people with their wild eyed theories about it, right? So you got all chaos going on. Now, people say, well, there's always an eclipse. There's clips here. 2017, there was not this much hype. There's not much coincidence like this going on in 2017 or the other clips. This eclipse right here, for some reason, there's a lot of things significant with this, all right? They're pushing this beyond, I mean, I'm not saying, again, you know, the world's going to end and nothing like that, right? But there's a reason why they're pushing all, all kinds of hype for this actual uh, eclipse coming Monday. And there's so many other things that I probably missed too, like I said. And if you think, if you guys know of any other uh, theories or anything like that going on about this coming eclipse, please put them in the chat room and all that stuff, and we'll try to check it out for the show here. But this is, uh, you know, all the significant stuff all being pushed for this one eclipse. Again, 2017, there was nothing like this. You know, it was talk of the eclipse, and people went to go see it, and it was done and over with. But there wasn't, I mean, you, would, you didn't have NASA launching rockets named after an Egyptian god. You didn't have uh, uh, a CERN looking for dark matter. You know what I mean? You didn't have this stuff going on. You know what I mean? And a comet being displayed, whatever the case. Uh, none of this was going on back then. So why now? Why this eclipse? You know what I mean, that's the big question we want to ask. And, and yeah, um, they're gonna, and the thing is, the media, right? The world elite, they'll perpetuate conspiracy theories because what's going to go on, right? Especially the rapture, you know, or the three days of darkness. Again, it's not a biblical prophecy, but they'll perpetuate these conspiracies to make people like us look stupid. And what they'll do is they'll downplay it because come April 9th, you still got to be here if you're alive, right? There's going to be no rapture April 9th. So they're going to use that. They're going to perpetuate these wild light theories. Then they're going to utilize that to downplay Christianity. Oh, look at you stupid Christians. Oh, yeah, look, morons. There was no rapture. First of all, real Christians don't say that. You know, because nobody knows the day of the hour. We went over all the details last week on the show, me and Cody Cox there. But and there's no rapture, and there's certainly no three days of darkness. You know what I mean? That's not going to happen this week come in April. Plain, plain and simple, because the the before the rapture comes, okay, whatever you want to call it, okay, Jesus says immediately after the tribulation, not before, the pre-tribulation rapture again as another uh, Jesuit lie, just like the Big Bang Theory. It's all lies, you know what I mean? It's not biblical. So don't be alarmed by this. And the thing is, why, even if the rapture was true, right, why would you be alarmed by that? You know, and I'm sure Trey could agree with all of us could agree. That we wish to God there was a pre-tribulation rapture. You kidding me? I would love for that to happen, but that's not the case. That's not what the Bible says. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. But uh, <laughs> you know, look at all the fear mongering going on, all the little things, and they'll put. You know, though experts say, "Don't worry, it's going to be safe." So they keep saying about all this stuff. Oh, don't worry, it's going to be safe. It's going to be safe. Why would you say that? To subconsciously uh, put these uh, things of fear in your head. You know what I mean? The solar eclipse uh, in the Horn Devil Comet, two good reasons to look up on April 8th, right? So you got all these astrological things going on on April 8th, and uh, yeah, it's got to be crazy. It really is when you look at it all. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, and also, uh, you get into the, I think it's, uh, what is this? Uh, yeah, International Day, which April 8th uh, coming up this year, right? It's called the International Day of Feng Shu, Awareness Day. Feng Shu is chi. It's, uh, you know, what she is, it's like an uh, invisible force, which is, you know, satanic. Uh, we'll get to that some other time. But it's called the Awareness Day of uh, Feng Chi. Celebrated every April 8th. This is a traditional ancient Chinese practice that uses energy to harmonize people Hyundai Santa with their Fe versus Honda Passport. Look what Santa Fe has. Look what Santa Fe has. And what Passport. And what Passport doesn't. Doesn't. From. Yeah, so 
I just lost the article, whatever the case. But yeah, uh, you got all these things happening. The ancient day of uh, Feng Chi. It's, uh, t- it's basically, they, they believe in this as energy force. That's where Bruce Lee supposedly had this uh, power to punch something, you know, coming with an inch from it, whatever. This one inch punch, whatever it's called. Uh, you know, all kinds of things like that. And I studied martial arts too. And, um, and when they started getting to the Chi stuff, they said, you got to summon these energies and all that. I backed out real quick. So I'm not doing that. I don't care. I mean, you could take my belt and shove it. Uh, the, from, you know, my opinion, yeah. I'm not going to do any of that garbage. You know what I mean? This is dangerous stuff you're dealing yeah. with. And you're dealing with demons when you do this stuff. But if you look at all the stuff going on together, man, then it, it just gets worse. I mean, like, now you got the cicada. Is that what you call it? Those bugs? The cicada, Jendon? The cicada? Cicada, yeah. 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 Insect invasion will be the biggest bug experience uh, in, in centuries. So... This is supposed to happen with during the eclipse or something like that. Uh, what's what's going on with that? So it's interesting because from what I understand, and my friend Brandon was telling me about it at work this morning. We got to talking about it. Um, so keep in mind, I'm basing this off of you know I haven't even had time to verify a whole lot of it. From what I understand, it is supposed to be the biggest cicada population that's happened since like James Madison or something like that. Huh. Um, so, and it's really interesting because one of the, uh, apparently, Hey, um, oh, so um, it's supposed to be, um, from what I understand, they say that, um, cicadas were supposed to be somehow related to locusts or things like that my personal opinion on that is that that is a a fear-mongering tactic as well because uh locusts see them um in the and they are in like they're technically a part of the locust family but when you think of locust traditionally like you see them in the bible these crop destroying locusts, they are from, there has to be a certain environment to create a locust swarm. And, um, I mean, I, I'm not an expert on cicadas by any means. Um, maybe they could do this, but typically the, you know, the locust is a grasshopper like creature and in these certain environments, they'll actually morph together and become this mindless hive that will destroy a crop. Now, from what I understand, locusts, I mean, excuse me, not locusts. Cicadas move in like cyclical patterns. So typically you'll get it every uh, seven years, uh, every 13 years, every 17 years. And some of the stuff I'm seeing uh, is that you're getting both life cycles all at once this time. Like both cycles have actually synced up. So the 13 and the 17 year, they've synced, they're, they've synchronized and they're going to be coming out all at once. Could this be something? Maybe. Um, once again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't fear when it comes to things like this, uh, because, you know, we're dealing with, uh, you know, le- there was a verse actually that I wanted to share earlier, and this is going to have to be, I gotta remember where I put my New Testament, here it is, um, this is actually probably where I'm gonna end up having to bow out for the night, um, but I do look forward to seeing what you all say when I, rewatch the show live or we rewatch the live show with the live chat tomorrow. But if you go to the book of Romans in chapter eight, this is when it, whether it's the stuff with CERN, whether it's NASA, whether it's the cicadas, anything that's going on with this eclipse or anything else that, you know, especially when they're, they're doing fear mongering. If you are a believer in Jesus Christ, this is the verse I want you to meditate on Romans eight and one. There is now for no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of what? Not just the law, a very specific law, the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If there was one final thought that I could give 
to you all, it's this right here. In the book of Amos, chapter 8, you see that there is an, 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 an eclipse-like phenomenon that is going on. And God said there will be a famine in the land, but it won't be of food and water. It'll be of understanding. And what I want you guys to realize is that when you typically see anything that looks like an eclipse in the Bible, it's because uh, an eclipse can be a sign of God's judgment on the land. But I want you to rest assured that if you're in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. You know, when the Babylonians came and they captured the people of the kingdom of Judah, people like Jeremiah, people like Baruch, and there were others got left behind. They didn't have to go into captivity. Now, there were some who did. Daniel, Ezekiel, they went into captivity. But it was because God had a very specific plan for them. And Daniel, because of his faithfulness to God, actually got a high station and was used in what I believe was the conversion of Nebuchadnezzar. Because if you read chapter 4, which is written by Nebuchadnezzar, all of a sudden we see Nebuchadnezzar not praying, praising God as the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but as his God. And that couldn't have happened without Daniel. So understand, keep your eyes on Christ, and I guarantee you not only will you not have condemnation, but God will use you in times like this. And that's why I prayed at the beginning of this show that we that the light of Christ would shine in this dark time because this isn't just a time of physical darkness, but it's a time of physical darkness over a land that is very much in spiritual darkness. And we as the body of Christ are now needed more than ever. But that only happens if we don't focus on the fear, but we focus on Christ. Amen to that. Yeah, man. Uh, and we got some more stuff to go over to, guys. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Trey, man. And I know you got some uh, family over uh, visiting you guys. So, yeah, thank you for joining the show. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I did just want to let you know before I go, yep. um, just so everybody knows, um, next week we'll be having a show on my channel. Oh, nice. And then in two weeks, which I believe is the 18th, correct? Um, yep. Is that two weeks or is that three weeks? That's two weeks, right? Two so weeks, So that's yeah. my anniversary. We'll be heading out of town, so I won't have any shows that week. Um, but if you're okay with it, we'll just either do a show. Uh, we'll do a show the week after I get back. Yeah, if that's, that's all fine. right. But uh, I'm going to be work. taking that week off because that is nine years that my, my wife and I have wow. been married. So, And then the 21st man. of that month, uh, my five-year-old will be turning six. Thank you. Wow. So, yeah, it's going to be a busy week. we got an anniversary and we got a birthday all in one week. Oh, so, wow. uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to head to Tennessee and we're just going to chillax. Yeah. So thank you guys so much for uh, just being here and, and sharing this with us and uh, listening to the the information that we've had. And Dan, thank you once again uh, for the opportunity to be able to be up here with you. I've really enjoyed it. God bless you all. Dan, oh, thank you, man. That... hope you have a wonderful night. I'll be praying for the rest of the show. Um, God bless you all. Happy Sabbath to everybody, and I will see you all the next time I'm up here. You too. Love you, brother. And uh, again, happy anniversary love, to you and the you missus. Too, brother. Th thank you. Thank you so much. All right, take care, brother. Yeah, you too. Take care. Shalom. Shalom. All right, guys. So um, thank you, Trey, for coming on. Uh, good stuff, man. I always love having Trey on because like, he's like a wealth of knowledge. He's like um, a junior David Carrico. <laughs> so, Trey, if you're listening, you're a junior David Carrico. So we call him Trey Boy. So, yeah, we got other stuff to talk about, too. So, um, yeah, it's crazy, man. And uh, so we brought this articles up last week so um there's a lot of things different things going on so a solar eclipse warning for flights as major airports caught in the past so uh because the possibility of um temperature inversions uh, and um communications uh interference and all that they are gonna like literally uh during the eclipse they're gonna shut the airports down we'll just hold the flights whatever the case uh from taking off the land and because of the, um, the visibility all kinds of things could happen so they're gonna do that for precautions the faa is gonna do that only airports within the path of the eclipse so there's nothing to really be worried about but um yeah but what it does is um things like this send a lot of fear mongering that's what it does you know what i mean and um during the inclement weather and all kinds of uh 
things like this, they do take precautions because um, I'm a pilot. I'm a private pilot. But um, visual, you know, having the good eyesight and all that is very important. So going from light to darkness real quick is bad because uh, when I did my night flights before I went out to the plane, we had to sit in a room in darkness for a few minutes, whatever the case, or cover your eyes and uh, get you, even before you start the plane, whatever, you get, um, get the blotchiness out of your eyes because um, if you go into a bright room into the pitch dark, you get these blotchiness in the eyes. So it limits your night vision, you know what I mean? So that's what pilots got to do. So imagine you're, you're flying a plane and trying to land a thing or take off, and all of a sudden it goes dark. So now you got this uh, bright light into darkness. Now it's going to affect your eye vision. So that's some of the reasons why they're going to hold flights, whatever the case, until then. And uh, people in the military too, military pilots do that all the time. They go in the black room before they do any night operations, uh, you know, helicopter attacks, uh, jet fighter attacks. So before they go into the cockpit to get in the plane, they go into a black room, whatever, to, or um, they do this exercise with their eyes to get the light out of it because um, it, it dramatically interferes with it. And if you don't believe me, just take a, sh you know, a flashlight shining in your face, then go out in the pitch black and you'll be like, you can't see nothing, you know. It takes your natural night vision away. So that's the reason why they're closing the airports down. Uh, well, not closing them down, I should say, just delaying stuff. So the airports are not going to be closed. It's going to be delayed. And um, why local FEMA, which is FEMA too, says you should stock up on food, fuel, and water supplies ahead of the eclipse. So now this is where the um, where it gets quirky. Even though I say, oh, they emphasize nothing to worry about, but they, you know, the places where they're going to be um, actually, like in Ohio, I guess, they're expecting more than 500,000 people expect to visit Ohio to watch the eclipse. So during this, let me get this slide here. So the path of the eclipse, along that path is going to be total doctor. So people from the west and east coast are going to be coming into these middle states to watch this eclipse because, again, so total eclipse are very rare. You don't get to see them all the time. So they're going to be coming into these states and going to get a lot of people. Uh, so they're telling people to pack up water and all that case, the traffic delays or whatever the case. But also, you should always be prepared anyway because you never know where that government's going to pull. You know what I mean? With the CERN going off and all that, we don't know what could happen. And could they use CERN as a, um, uh, like EMP? You know what I mean? And blame it. Uh, you know, anything could happen. Like, But the thing is, always be prepared for anything. You know what I mean? Not just for the eclipse coming, but always be prepared for anything. You know, as Jesus says, keep oil in your lamps. You never know what's going to happen. You never know the day or the hour or anything that's going to happen. So always keep water, um, what, <laughs> water, light, uh, lamp, yeah, with fuel in your lamps, okay? Tongue tied now. So, yeah, all these little things going on, and emergency officials warn people to stock up on food, water, and fuel ahead of solar eclipse. So there's several reasons uh, why they want people about this. And again, uh, who knows what their true intent could be. Could they shut down the grid? They, and then they, there could be a million reasons things could happen. And again, don't be worried about this stuff. Don't uh, let it shake you. There's a million things that could happen. Uh, and again, it could happen t today. It could happen tomorrow. You know what I mean? So always be prepared for something, you know. Um, you know, my personal thing, I would say, you know, food and water, you know, you know storable foods and water, whatever the case, survival gear, uh, firearm to, to pet, you know, protect you and the family, and nothing wrong with um, being protected, you know, so things like that. But there is a lot of fan mongering going around here. And look at this one. They're saying how to prepare your plumbing for the total eclipse, where once in a lifetime event crosses paths with all of your favorite lifetime infrastructure. So, <laughs> they're telling you how to, uh, yeah, fill the void. We've compiled a helpful tip sheet so your plumbing and sewers are adequately prepared for the total eclipse. <laughs> so, they talk about all the people visiting in the, you know, the middle of the country, literally. You know, just everybody congestion in the middle of the country. And there's got to be a lot of people using the bath and whatever. And there's got to be a lot of, yeah, people using restrooms. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's funny. Stock up your toilet paper, a plunger in the logical place. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just, um, and the thing is, a lot of people take these the wrong way, too. That's the other thing. So just the little articles here. And some Kentucky schools decided to close schools for the clips because they want people to watch it. And the other thing, too, is you never know what's going to happen. You know, it's a, they could use this eclipse and push... Martial, anything could happen. They could use this clip to uh, stage something to push martial law or some kind of a lockdown or whatever the case. We don't know what they're going to do. 
but they're closing some schools and uh, the rare 2024 eclipse and the rapture. You know, they talk about people spreading this rapture doctrine, and which is unbiblical. Yeah, I mean, and so if anybody says, oh, the rapture is going to be on the 8th, it's uh, with the moon. No, you don't know the Bible if you think that. Because Jesus says in Matthew 24, immediately after the tribulation. The tribulation hasn't started yet. The Antichrist hasn't been revealed yet. And Second Thessalonians chapter 2. I mean, if I had time, I'd go over all of them again. And we did so many studies on this stuff. Jesus vividly says before he comes, okay, the Antichrist comes first. So if you look at what's going on, right, the world teaches, all the churches out there, we're not going to be here for the Antichrist. We're not going to be here for the Mockula Beast. We're going to be magically raptured up before the bad stuff happens. That is not what the Bible says. I used to defend that garbage too. So what's going to happen when this Antichrist comes? He's going to do a lot of miraculous things in this world. He's going to create a lot of peace and everything else. This guy is going to be very influential. So what's that going to mean? A lot of people, and he's going to be claiming to be the son of God. So a lot of people are going to fall for this clown because they told, got told by the churches and um, dispensationalism, the Antichrist um, comes after Jesus and all that. No, the Bible says, again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Jesus says, these things happen, the man of perdition needs to be revealed for us. He's going to be proclaimed to be God in the temple of God. That's that third temple coming. And Matthew 24, he talks about the things that have to happen before his coming. So when you see the sun and moon lose this light, and it's not an eclipse. They're literally going to just lose their light. It's not just going to be for a few minutes. They're completely going to shut off, literally. You know what I mean? And the stars are going to literally fall from heaven. It's not metaphorically. It's not figuratively. This is literally events that are going to happen. The sun and moon are going to stop giving this light. The stars are literally, not figuratively, literally going to fall from the sky. The sky is going to literally rip open. You're going to see Jesus Christ coming with great power and glory, literally through the clouds. Every eye in the world, every eye literally is going to see him. There's no secret rapture like the Kirk Cameron movies, a bunch of garbage. They're good movies, good books, that people disappear and they blame aliens or whatever. No, that's not going to happen. That's fairy tales. That's Hollywood. That's Jesuit garbage. That's what it is. It's not like the movie Left Behind, okay? Whatever you learn from the movies and all that stuff Left Behind, get that out of your head because that's not reality. That's not biblical. You're going to be here for the bad stuff if you're alive because Jesus says those who endure to the end shall be saved, plain and simple. So any idea of a rapture, and trust me, what I say, trust me, all right? Uh, every one of us would love more than anything to be raptured out of here before the bad stuff happens. And that's something I would love to be wrong on. All right, but I know what the Bible says, and the Bible definitely does not say that's going to happen. So there's going to be no pre-tribulation rapture, and certainly no three days of darkness garbage. It was a uh, false Catholic prophecy that was scaring people uh, centuries ago. It was to scare people from leaving the Catholic Church. That's what it was about, and it was uh, different versions of it in different cultures, the mysticism or that. There is no three days of darkness that it's going to come. So when you see this um, eclipse happen on the 8th, Monday coming up here, and about, well, I think it's like 20 minutes, whatever, how long it lasts, the sun's going to come back on again. You're going to wake up April 9th with the sun out. You're going to wake up April 9th being here. And I cannot wait. Oh, man, there's a load of channels out there spreading this garbage. The three days of darkness garbage, the rapture garbage. I cannot wait to go on these channels on April 9th and start trolling these people. And the thing is, most of these videos, they're going to delete it right away. That's how they are. They'll come up with these wildlife prophecies and, you know, fake things are going to happen. And when they're wrong, they delete the channel. Instead of coming out to say, I'm sorry, we're wrong. And you know what? That's integrity right there. We've all been wrong in times, right? If you run one of these channels or you're spreading one of these um, uh, theories about this uh, clips coming up, right? And when it comes and goes, and if you're wrong, if you come out with a video and say, listen, guys, we were wrong, we're sorry. That gives you a lot of credit. But just to delete the um, video, act like it didn't happen after tons of people already heard you say this, you're just covering a lie. That's all you're doing. And that gives you no merit at all. What gives you merit to say, hey, I was wrong, and I've been wrong when I had uh, different shows, right? I come out the next show and say, this is what I said last week or whatever the case showed you, right? I was wrong about that, and I'm sorry. 
No harm at all. And that gives you more merit when you do that. But don't cover your um, lies with garbage. Or kick the can down the road. Oh, oh no, no, no. I, I made a mistake. It wasn't um, this eclipse. It's the next eclipse coming. So it just kicks the can down the road and spreads the fear more. And the same thing that QAnon does that all the time. <laughs> They'll come up with this wildlife stupidity. The Q codes. Oh, we got a Q drop. Oh, you know, the president, you know, Trump's got to be reinstalled in uh, this date. And the dates come and go. And nothing happens. It's a psyops. That's all that it was. You know what I mean? And um, I don't even want to go down that road because complete stupidity. Uh, QAnon garbage. It really is. And I can't believe people still believe in the crap. And I can't believe people still believe in this stuff. How many times did these ministries come out? Every time there was some kind of eclipse or whatever happening, they come out, oh, it's the end of the world, the rapture. And the dates come and go. Nothing happens. Yeah, I passed the Lindsey Grahams out there, even, um, what's his name there, radio talk show host there, uh, for years spreading the September-October surprise. Every year. They we're going to have a September-October surprise. This is when they're going to pull the plug and all that. September, October roll around into November. Guess what? Nothing happens. You know what I mean? And it's the same garbage all the time. You know what I mean? And if you read the Bible, know the Bible, and trust the Bible, trust the Lord, the Word of God, you don't have to worry about these things. And if something does happen, guys, who cares? You know what I mean? Who cares? You know what I mean? Something does happen. We know they use the, the, the events to push certain things. This is ancient stuff they've been doing. You know what I mean? Like uh, the elite, they always knew how the stars worked. Like when we have the so-called global warming, right? So every, uh, I think it's every about uh, 9 to 11 years, the earth heats up because the sun expands. It goes through a natural cycle, right? So right away, the globalists will cash in on it to say, oh, this is a proof of global warming. Then a couple of years later, it starts cooling down again. Then they change it to something else. And so they know how the stars work. They've been doing this for thousands of years. Like back in the age of my Isaac days, right? A uh, person who wanted to be a king or a ruler, he would tell the people, you need to worship me because I am a human god. People are like, yeah, right, go get lost, you know? Then he goes, all right, for your disobedience, I'm going to make the sun go away in the middle of the day. Because they knew the eclipse. They knew how the stars worked. And sure enough, the sun goes away, everybody falls to their face worshiping them. Or a certain astrological thing happens that shocks everybody. And the same thing, they do the same things today, pushing all this garbage out there. They know how the things work. You know what I mean? And it's, it's crazy. So, um, yeah. So, guys, just uh, uh, read it for yourselves, guys. I mean, you need to read the Bible for yourselves and don't listen to fools out there. That I just saw, oh, man, it irritates me for, to no end. It really does. It irritates me to no end that people spread this garbage. So, guys, if you like the show today, we got um, the PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. We got this uh, Ko-Fi site and the, the links. Uh, the links are in the um, description and also uh, on the chat room there. We pinned it in the chat room there. It basically helps support this operation and, um, you know, it helps pay the rent in the studio and all that good stuff. So, and we thank you guys for the people who did donate. And the best thing you could do is pray for us. Not to sound like a broken record every week, guys, but prayer is the most important thing. Uh, spiritual warfare is the most important thing. And uh, if you don't got money, don't worry about it. We're not here to suck your money like the ministries do out there. You know what I mean? If you want to donate, that's great. But prayer is the most important. You know what I mean? So, and again, um, you know, without you guys, this show would not be possible. It pays for the camera, the microphones, uh, all the stuff we got going on, the streaming services and everything else. So we thank you very much for that. And uh, so we do got our... Q&A coming up. Let me get to that channel. Hang on a second. It's going to be on a Rumble channel. So the reason why we do that for, if you don't already know, because um, we started doing that on Rumble because what happens is YouTube has restrictions on what you can and can't say. And to honor YouTube, I mean, we have to respect that policy. Much as I don't like, you know, them censoring you with things, I have to respect YouTube's policy and uh, to use a platform. You know what I mean? So, so we're doing our questions and answers on our Rumble channel. Let me put it in the chat room here. Q&A show next, and that's the link right there. So, so if you want to head over to that Rumble channel, and we're gonna get that all set up. So, what we're gonna to do too is when you you could, we're gonna take your phone calls, or your questions, or comments in the chat room. So, we'll give you guys a few minutes to head over there, and uh, we put it started at eleven, but 
um, yeah, don't worry about it. We're going to start it like five minutes as soon as we get off the air here. And uh, thank you guys for, you know, and I just want to go over this real quick here. This is, if you do want to watch the eclipse, which is a cool thing to do, watch the blood moons and everything, it's a really cool thing to witness. Because you're witnessing God's nature. I mean, God, the things God created. It's just, a, it's a beautiful sight. You know what I mean? And it's kind of cool because it's going over seven cities named Niveth. N Nineveh, I'm sorry. And Salem. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. Salem means like Shalom. And Nineveh is uh, what basically um, Jonah and a whale, what he went through and everything. So that's where a lot of people think, because there's going over several cities named Nivenith. So that's where a lot of people confuse it as a rapture, because um, what uh, Jonah went through and everything. So that they try to converge it as a rapture, which is not. Again, if you you need to study the Bible if you think that's a rapture going to happen, it's not. Yeah, I mean, look at all the cities: uh, Jonah, Texas, Nivenith, Rapture, Indiana. All biblical names. It's kind of uh, crazy. And that right there, she just shows you God's handiwork. It's not a rapture. And that, yeah, it could be very well, this very well could be a warning from God because look what's going on, guys. I don't know if you all paid attention to the news. There's been several major earthquakes. Taiwan, within the last couple of days, Taiwan, uh, New Jersey got hit, uh, on the West Coast. Uh, we felt um, the tremors from all the way up here in Rhode Island. So this is God's judgment and warnings to people. And he does use these things like this to warn people. So this could be very well an impending judgment upon this nation. And I'm not saying it's not, okay, but I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not the rapture or anything like that, but this very well could be the beginning of woes to come. Because God does use things like this to warn people. And again, if you are a, a follower of Jesus Christ, you should not be worried about that. You should be welcoming that. Because look at Stephen, look at all the other apostles. When they were put up for death, right? They were excited. They were exceedingly joyful that they were going to be put to death in Jesus' name. And it doesn't mean you got to be put to death or anything like that. No, you should be welcoming this because the sooner this stuff happens, the sooner Jesus comes. So is this the beginning of God's wrath? It very well could be. Very well could be. And, and who could blame him? Seriously. Who could blame the, uh, God for putting wrath on the United States of America, our country, and all the other countries? So look at the filth that this country has been um, accepted now. And I don't want to get into it YouTube here. I'll talk more about it on Rumble because uh, it is disgusting that goes on in this country. And people even the so-called patriot movement or the truth movement, they phone for the garbage too. Half these people in the truth movement and patriot movement, they don't worship the God of the Bible. You got these new ages that infiltrated it. It's crazy, man. It really is. But these are awesome things to watch, though, if you can. And uh, so these events that did take place in the Bible, Acts 2.20, it says the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood. And before that great and remarkable day of the Lord comes. And Joel 2.31 and 32 says the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. So before the great and terrible day of Yahweh comes, it shall come to pass that whoever shall call upon his name of Yahweh shall be delivered. And in this case, today is Jesus Christ. So it's very remarkable that uh, astrological things take place uh, to one people or impending judgments and things like that. So guys, if you want to send any prayer requests or anything, information to me or just ask me questions. So uh, take a screenshot of that. It's uh, truthradioshow at outlook.com where you can contact me and all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, so we'll see you guys on the other side here. So go to that link, and I'm going to put it in the chat room one more time. And thank you guys out there who support the channel uh, financially. And without you guys, I mean, tell you, uh, yeah, we had some close calls uh, last few months and everything else. And by the hand of God that we're able to stand, and yeah, you know, so it's... Uh, Especially months ago when we got some severe attacks by people and everything else. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys for doing that. And uh, spiritual coverings as well. So, 
Let's um, end in prayer here, and we'll see you on the other side. So um, take about five minutes, go get something to drink, whatever, and yeah, call us up and you know let us know you know uh, how the show was, any questions, comments, or you got any testimonies you want to talk about that's not related, uh, go for it. So I got plenty of time, so we're gonna have fun tonight. So let's close out in prayer. So Jesus, Yeshua Messiah, thank you so much for um, this, with such an amazing show, and Father. We ask you to comfort everybody here that needs comforting and blessings and healing and during these troubled times to keep us all safe and keep us full of courage and wisdom and knowledge and just spiritually on fire for you, Lord, and in, this, in these troubled times here. So help us be a light and salt of the earth for the world to see that through your blood, Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, that the world may be saved. In your mighty name we pray, amen. So, all right, guys, so we'll see you over there in Rumble. And, uh, again, there's a link in the chat room. And it's also in the description of the video. So if you're watching the video, if you go into the description, the, the questions and answers after show, the bonus show, it's right there. So go head over to our Rumble channel, which is Truth Radio Show, and we'll see you there in a few minutes. So God bless Shalom, and you are the resistance.